asked to jump on and then we'll get started. Uh, also, we are going to be recording this webinar, so I uh, just want to give you a heads up about that. Meanwhile, while we're waiting for folks to arrive, please take a moment to complete the three question survey. I think it's three questions. It's brief. It's fun. These questions will connect to our topics today and help help uh, Raven out with some relevant conversations. So you can use your cell phone camera to scan the QR code. You can go to menti.com and enter code 301-60957 or click on the link in chat. So there's so many different ways. So hopefully you can take a moment to, uh, to do that. Thank you so much and we'll get started shortly. This is where I wish we had a little bit of music in the background, you know, some of that, you know, get busy kind of music. Wait, not in a Kenny G kind of way, but in a let's let's do some work, working music. Some energizing music. Energizing music. Now, Raven, you're more than welcome to sing, you know, if you got any talents and entertain folks. But I don't we'll think anybody wants that. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll just give it a, another minute uh, or two. Usually we have folks that come in within that first uh, five minutes. So thank you all for taking that uh, survey. Hold tight. Hi, Charlotte. I think you're asking about um, trouble hearing Kyle. Um, on my end, I can hear Kyle fine. Thank you, Raven. Yeah. Always good to do a tech check in. Um. Excellent. Okay, well, it seems like we've had a little bit of lull and people jumping on. So I think that means we have a cue to get started. Um, if you haven't had a chance to take the survey, that QR code um, is on each of the slides following in the, in the introduction. And uh, the link is also in chat. So um, please take that. That'll help uh, load everything up for a great co relevant conversation later on uh, in, in this webinar. But welcome everyone to the latest Virginia Main Street webinar. And it's focused on effective communications. We had a little breather between the Main Street Now conference and today. So I hope that your summer is both productive and rejuvenating from a well-deserved vacation. Take that vacation, take your PTO time. So thank you for being here today. But I'm Kyle Meyer, I'm Community Development Administrator for DHCD's Virginia Main Street Program, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. Um, as usual, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping and note the QR code in the upper right-hand corner if you haven't yet taken that uh, survey. To reduce background noise and distraction, please mute yourself. You all are doing a great job with that so far. That provides a sharper focus to our speakers and panelists. So look forward to all well, no panelists today. But look for a little microphone in the bottom center of your browser window for that. We are recording the webinar, and shortly after the recording um, and presentation, a presentation handout will be posted on virginiamainstreet.com. I also send that link and um, the, the, the PDF presentation to all the attendees, so, or those who have registered, so you'll get it that way as well. And there will be a Q&A opportunity at the end, so please use the chat feature to ask questions. Uh, but feel free to enter your questions in the chat at any point. Uh, I'll incorporate the question at the most opportune time. So find the chat feature in the bottom right-hand corner of your browser. I'd like to just give you a few announcements on the front end. This is when I've got your captured attention, right? So our Community Vitality Office, uh, the 2022 calendar events is chock full of opportunities to learn and tap into our program offerings. You can find the entire calendar on virginiamainstreet.com and through DHCD's workshop registration page, uh, both hyperlinked here. So when I share this PDF, the hyperlinks will be available. But here are just a few upcoming highlights to be aware of. So if you are an exploring Main Street community, mark your calendar for September 22nd, 11 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. for the community uh, interchange. 
uh, where you'll connect to your peers, enjoy solution-oriented conversations, and generally see the possible. So more information will be emailed later this month uh, if you're an exploring Main Street community. So stay tuned for that. And then stay tuned for more information on a development readiness ready webinar series. It's gonna be focused on small scale development, attracting development and supporting small businesses. So that's gonna uh, hopefully happen sometime in the fall, how it's gonna land and speakers, all that stuff's coming together right now. So just stay tuned. I think we've got some really good content uh, for you to help out with um, uh, your, your local uh, real estate market and creating more housing opportunities in downtown and, and spaces for new businesses. So, so stay tuned. Also, <clears throat> we will have more information soon on this for this awesome opportunity. We're planning to expand the Virginia Main Street program through the Mobilizing Main Street tier. This middle tier provides targeted organizational development support to build a community's local revitalization program using the Main Street approach. This tier is ideal for communities that intend to pursue application for advancing for uh, advancing Virginia Main Street designation, so becoming a designated community. And so this is both for rural towns and larger cities. You might be aware that um, our program guidelines primarily focus on our rural communities with a cap population around 65,000, so Lynchburg is our largest. <clears throat> but we are um, piloting some services to our larger cities. Um, so uh, any of the bigger cities in Hampton Roads, Norfolk, um, Hampton, um, Newport News, as well as Roanoke and uh, Charlottesville and any of the other larger cities. So stay tuned for that. The program, the Virginia Main Street program guidelines are hyperlinked uh, here on the page also for more information about uh, the mobilizing Main Street program. But stay tuned for uh, information later this month. There will be an application. Um, and so if it's not clear, this is really a program to prepare uh, a local program or a community for, for designation. Uh, it's a two-year program. And at the end, the application for designation will open. So we're doing things a little differently than we have in the past. The timeline, we're looking at um, October through November being the application period. December, the cohort will be announced. And then in January, um, training and services will begin. So uh, it's a great opportunity. We can't uh, wait to, to, to dive into this. Now, in today's webinar, you will learn best practices for successful Main Street communication strategy that leads to the engagement needed to inspire action from your donors and volunteers. So our speaker is Raven Bates, Director of Administration and Communication for the Virginia Community Development Corporation, also known as VCDC. Raven loves working on their Mission Elevation Program. It's an internal capacity building program for nonprofits designed to bolster sustainability for long-term mission impact and communities served. You'll hear more about that uh, from Raven. She has worked in the nonprofit sector for over 16 years, and Raven takes an active role in the nonprofit community outside of her work at VCDC and serves as board chair of a local nonprofit, Art on Wheels. She holds a degree in media arts and design with a minor in anthropology from James Madison University. Go Dukes! So welcome, Raven. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing now, and Raven, the stage is all yours. Um, so uh, here you go. Hold on here. Great. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. Great. Seeing some thumbs up. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited to be here today. And as Kyle said, um, I'm a part of VCDC. Um, and VCDC traditionally has been known as a financial um, supporter of affordable housing and community development. We started as the first tax credit syndicator in Virginia, uh, but since have done a lot of work to develop capacity of the nonprofit sector that is supporting um, community development and affordable housing. So that's that's where our mission elevation program um, came in and, and was sparked. And that's kind of what brought me here today. We've had um, some Main Street organizations come through the program. Um, I'll shout out 
um, historic Manassas and, um, and Harrisonburg. Um, not sure if I saw either of them on the call. Um, but it's just part of my job that I love so much is supporting the capacity of other nonprofits that are, are making a difference in the community. So um, along with that, so VCDC recently went through a rebrand where we started developing more sophisticated um, opportunities to work with our audiences and engage our audiences in ways um, that that we weren't before. So that's where this topic um, sparked. So I'm actually going to pause and share my screen. Um, let's see. Give me one second. Can everybody see my screen? Um, so I just wanted to pause here yep. um, and and say thanks for for filling out the mentee. It will help us as we we work through um, the content today. Uh, usually, I like to just do a check in. I love to see how people are feeling. Um, looks like we have a lot of curiosity, a lot of energized, upbeat. I like the content. Um, we got some lackadaisical. So hopefully um, by the end of the call, we'll have um, shifted um, some energy. Um, but just, just like to see kind of where people are in the room, especially as we're virtual um, and we can't kind of feel that out um, together. So thanks for that. Um, also, fun fact, I grew up in a Main Street town, and I also um, went to um, college in one. So I have spent most of my life um, working in or around um, Main Street. Um, so I think that that was a really cool reflection as, as we move into um, our next question. Uh, which thanks Kyle for sharing. Kyle found this question and I thought it was really fun to give us an idea um, and start thinking um, a little bit more abstractly about how we, we'd kind of describe things. So I like to see here, if your city were a breed of dog, which breed would it be? Um, got a lot of golden retrievers, some labradoodles, uh, Tibetan mastiff, um, curious about whose that is. Um, and then Jack Russell's, and then funny enough, I added the pug. Um, I have a pug, <laughs> so I have an affinity for for their quirky adorableness. And um, so, just thanks for for sharing that. Um, oh, we got some pit bulls. Um, misunderstood, but kind deep down, and love that. Um, and so to help us get a little bit more into the content, um, one of my questions, um, just being in the nonprofit sector, I've worked, like Kyle said, in the nonprofit, in nonprofit work for 16 years. I worked in almost every part of a nonprofit, um, a lot of it being in fundraising, um, which then led me into more of the communications role I am in now. Um, so you can see here, we have a strong 2.2 in the comfort level slash loving the fundraising. Um, so I will I will bring that around and, and tell you why I asked that um, in just a moment. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll reshare um, in just one second as we hop into the content. All right, give me one second. All right, so everybody see that okay? Thumbs up. <clears throat> so you're probably all wondering, well, why did she ask you about fundraising? We're here to talk about engagement and communication. So one of the things that I want to um, have everybody kind of experience through the call today um, is 
is kind of a shift in mindset between fundraising and fundraising. And this is really where communications and that uh, fundraising piece comes in. So what does the success look like for the call today? Um, looking at how we develop strategic personas to drive engagement. And so I know a lot of words get thrown around a lot like marketing, and, engage, and all of these things, but really at the heart of what we wanna do as nonprofits and, and community developers is that engagement piece. We know we're doing good work and we wanna connect with the people that can help us do that. And how we do that is really a value proposition and we'll talk about that um, in a second. Um, we'll go over the process of developing your organization's audience personas. Um, and then we'll develop, um, begin to look at developing your own brand um, persona, which I think for me is um, one of the most important things that VCDC did as we did our rebrand and one of the most helpful in how we engaged our staff in that process. Um, so I'll share a little bit about that. And so then just a reminder that um, fundraising doesn't have to be uh, scary. Um, so a shift in mindset to really what we're doing is developing community of, of people that support us and, and friends. So what we'll do is I'll talk a little bit about personas and what they are and why um, we think they're important to use. And then audience persona development process. We'll go through brand persona and then what does success look like at your organization if you do that? Um, so that's a little bit about what to expect. Um, and then also we'll have an opportunity to hop back on Menti. Um, we're gonna do a little practice on developing your brand persona. So keep your phone handy um, and or be ready to kind of um, link back into um, a different set of Menti questions. Um, so moving on and looking at kind of what um, our personas. Um, so when, when I think about personas, I think about um, really this key set of information about a group of people that is centered around motivations. So when we start to look at those motivations of the people that support us, um, we can start to understand why they're there. And when we understand more of the why, we can kind of look at how we're, we're engaging with them and be more successful in that. So that's where that value proposition comes in, where if I know somebody really is interested in supporting small businesses, then I can give those, them those opportunities. Um, so that's, that's how we um, can start to create some communications and target them to the motivations of our supporters. Sometimes as nonprofits, we we just wanna tell everybody all the time what we do and say, we're doing all this great work and it's so great. And so our, our kind of our message gets lost in all of that information. So really what this comes down to is targeting, targeting some strategy around who and when um we we message um and then along with that is our brand persona and your brand persona is going to be that key piece of internal work that you do to create consistency um among um your staff and how you show up um and speak with the different audiences that you develop um and so the key to all of this is motivations and why. Um, so thinking about our time as running small nonprofits, some of, some of you I know are teams of one, um, and then thinking about the efficiency of our time and creating those connections, um, this helps there. Um, and it can also um, give you some internal reflection on helping you understand your offerings and the value they bring to the people that you serve or that support you. Um, it can be a roadmap um, in decision making. And then also coming back to the, the fundraising piece, it kind of also can bring the fear out of that. So when you look at developing a community around you um, that are gonna support you, as you create those engagements, it becomes a little easier to think about the fundraising piece um, 
as you build it out to be friend, a fundraising. Um, and just a little statistic on average, um, this is a slightly older statistic, but um, it, <clears throat> on average, 35, we create 35% more content with 17 percent less engagement. So that means we're working harder for less impact. And as a nonprofit thinking about our sustainability, um, that's not always great. So putting some of this um, strategy work um, forward, um, we begin to develop some of those efficiencies. Um, and so um, how do we do it? So there is a there's a lot of really great resources and I'm going to share those later. We don't have a lot of time to go into all of the details. I will do a brief overview of where to get started and, and how the process works and give you an example. Um, and then I will share resources at the end. So a lot of this work is created on making assumptions at first. And so I always like to pause at the beginning of any any opportunity you're taking to design a process or design strategy or even visual design um, to think about your mindset and how that relates to um to um what you're doing and and so there's a couple of resources here um, that I have provided that help you do that. So really thinking about um, the audiences you're talking about, taking stereotypes out of, out of those and thinking just about your organization and the motivation that they have to support you. Um, and yes, we are making some assumptions, but we'll come into a research and validation at the end. Um, so, um, where to even begin is, is doing some brainstorming. Um, as a designer, um, the brainstorming um, always comes comes kind of first and natural to me. Uh, but this is a great way to just get your even your staff involved or or your board and think about who 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 serves who do you serve? Is it clients? Is it donors? Obviously, as a nonprofit, we're talking about donors, volunteers in your instances. Um, and then really start thinking about the why and the what. Um, and so as you identify them, um, we'll group them by motivation. Um, and really the important part here is thinking about motivations. Why, why are they supporting you? Um, what, what can you help them to get out of that value proposition and the why? Um, and so I shared some common motivations here. Um, there may be some um, in your organizations um, that are a little bit different. Um, but then, then once we group them by motivation, um, this is really where the definition of who they are. And this is where I think about here when we group them, we're creating teams um, of people. And I kind of equate it to um, a baseball team or um, a basketball team. Um, where similarities and people with similar skills or motivations come together. And then as we work to define that persona, it becomes um, the captain of that team. So the ideal person you would want to be leading or on that team. Um, and so I think for me, that helps me um, take some of my, my biases and, and things out of that as well. So um there's a list of questions there um really really thinking about motivations here um and then um the fourth part of this is what you do next and that's the engagement and how you take it um take people or personas from one place to another and build build that process with them so you may have some Audience, audience personas that are just working to build awareness. Those are your motivational um, working groups that you kind of want to build into. Um, maybe it's major donors that you don't have right now. So you have to work from that first step to get them um, to that nurturement in, in, in five. And then um, just 
af that's that's a bulk majority uh, of getting that done and i know that's a lot and i'll share some tips later on kind of where to start um but then the next part is research and validate and so this is where we get into surveying and and um, engagement um interviews and things like that to test that work and so audience personas are always a moving document so they can shift as your organization shifts your focus um which makes them very um helpful to kind of re-engage with on the regular um and so that's all well and good you get through all of that but um kind of what does it look like and kyle mentioned i am on the board of a local arts nonprofit. Um, so I pulled um, a sample of something that that we've had a challenge with is getting new board members. Um, and so one of ours is we want a community engager. We need somebody that can help us to create bonds in the community that's going to have that time to give us. And so here is an example of one of our personas. Um, that is a community engager so it goes through and and so this is the the outcome of a template that we have developed um that just brings um a very very um kind of a vibrant picture of who we're talking to when when we're looking for this kind of uh, person to be engaged with our nonprofit. Um, I won't belabor a lot of it, but I will. I will say um, the important part for me is the how we help, and so that's the value proposition that we're going to give, and and that is a direct correlation with the why they want to be involved, um, and then also just knowing what communication styles and preferences um, those groups that we want to engage prefer is a is a great way to know if you are utilizing the proper channels um, so for instance we have a big push on social media um, but the people that we want to engage as part of our board are not going to um, engage with, uh, with us that way um, so we had to shift um, where our communications were going so some of that is getting more involved in the community groups um, and so that's where the value on this is, is where do we want to go? And so you'll see something else that we have built in. And this is something that's kind of special to how I've built it, is this from to relationship. Um, this is really where our goals um, come in and we ha can build those tactics to get from one place to another in regards to um, a persona. Um, so for instance, right now our community engager um, is, is somebody we really want involved with our, our nonprofit, but they're just a once a year donor. They've attended one event. Um, however, we really desire them to move to a regularly engaged um, ongoing major donor. And then how do we do that? Um, and so that's where some of the tactic work in between. Um, but we wouldn't have had those realizations without laying this out. Um, and then an important part of communication um, for any persona is the call to action. What do we want them to do? Um, so we really want this person to become a community art ambassador for us. Um, and so just thinking and pausing and thinking about your, your groups um, and who your supporters are, um, you know, just think about who this might resonate for you. Um, what is the main pain point um, in your fundraising campaigns? Or is it developing more board engagement? Um, and just as you think about where to start with your persona work, that would be a place to do it. Um, so I think I'll pause um, there. I haven't looked at chat, Kyle, but um, as we we kind of went through the audience personas, um, did we see any questions? Or we can we can kind of pause there. Um, I know it's a lot of information, a lot of process, um, but we will share links and resources for you guys to take away. Um, 
uh, following up um, on this. And then next we'll go into some brand persona work and you guys will have an opportunity to practice um, on your own. Yeah, no questions in chat at the moment. Um, but an observation for me, for those communities who have worked with uh, Main Street America, and this is probably more of our designated communities, uh, maybe a handful of um, the exploring Main Street communities, but these personas that Raven is talking about are very similar to the um, to the to the data that the uh, Main Street America or Matt Wagner works through when helping you all to define your transformation strategies or your strategic focus areas because it's market based. And so um, uh, they provide the tapestry, the Esri tapestry, which is usually around uh, a persona of a particular market segment that um, falls within your, um, your region or your, your target uh, service area. And so it, it's the same kind of stuff. What are their motivations? What do they like to do? How do they like to spend their time? Where do they find value? And so that could be a really helpful nod to developing your per personas. <clears throat> Just something to think about there. And that, that, that's sort of uh, accessible to anyone. Those kinds of reports, uh, you just have to pay through um, for through Esri. Yeah, absolutely. And is that more consumer based um, than than based on on kind of donors um, or internal support uh, personas? In that um, case, yes, it is. It yeah. is consumer based. Yeah. Yeah, and so if you do some reading on this, you'll see a lot of a lot of them will be called customer um, profiles or customer personas. This is something that is done in that sector as well, but there's a lot of research and development in the nonprofit sector around um, donorship and building volunteer to donor kind of pipelines through looking at some of these personas. Um, so um, I, I think that that's, that's, audience persona in a nutshell. And I know we went through it very quickly, um, but again, we will share lots of resources. And I think some of it is just getting that framework and starting somewhere. I'll share some tips at the end of, of kind of how to get started. It seems like a lot to do when you already have um, things on your plate, um, but that is, let's see. Next, one of the things that I get really excited about um, talking about is your brand persona. So who knows um, more about you than you? And who knows more about who you desire to be um, than you? And so I talked a little bit um, about um, VCDC's rebrand. Um, we went through a rebrand that unfortunately launched at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, so that was a challenge in itself. But one of the most important and interesting and I think fun things um, that we did to engage our staff and then really get an idea of who, well, I say who our brand is, but um, what our brand is through imagining who our brand would be as a person um, was, was the brand persona um, activity. And so we worked with, and I will share their information at the end, um, the Spark Mill, they're a consulting agency in Richmond. Um, they, they developed this process for us um, because branding can be very um, challenging. We think, when we think about brand, we think about logos, um, we think about design, we think about colors, but it's a lot more than that. And it's about that feeling. And so when we're interacting with those audience personas, um, how do we want them to feel? It's beyond the, the nice um, snazzy logo that's new and modern and fresh, but it's how do we show up and how do we do that consistently? And so that's where the brand persona comes in. Um, and so I shared um, a little bit about VCDC's brand, um, which I will share was a major shift from where we started. Um, and so that's one of the main takeaways of this, this work, this brand persona work was, was really thinking, um, about what, who do we think we are? 
who are we and then who do we want to be uh, and so when we really broke down our work and we started thinking about um this in sense of if we showed up in a room who would we be and what would we look like um in terms of that feeling that's we, we got this whole persona and so that's basically what brand personification is is thinking about if your brand was a person what would they do um we i will say we had debates um in our office it was a very interesting um realization to come to find out um kind of who we desired to be um in conjunction with our mission so um we shared that we support the housing and um, community development industry as a whole. One big part of our mission is, is making sure that organizations have their, um, have their internal capacity as strong as it can be so we can create strong communities. And so when we looked at that, um, we, we saw the juxtaposition of we were coming off as a very, very male, um banking financial organization and that just wasn't who we were um and so you can see um our our we use this for internal purposes i'm sharing it with you guys um but you can even see uh, as part of our conversation it got down into what does our dining room table look like what would our house look like um what would we drive um and and so some of those things start creating some consistency around how you how you show up how you write um, blog posts or or your newsletters, um, the the wording, um, even phrases. So it really is. I used North Star earlier, and I really do think these personas can be North Stars on guiding your time and your energy and who to focus on. Um, so right now, um, I did have another mentee that um, I would invite you guys to do as we start to think about um, our brand um, as a, a person. So fun connection back to we asked, you know, if your town was was a dog, what would it be? So kind of creating creating those connections. So if your if your organization was a person, um, there's a couple of questions on the mentee, and so I invite you to to answer those over the next. Um, we'll we'll spend maybe five minutes or so, and then we can share them, and and kind of um, process through that a little bit. And if anybody has questions, we can pause there on brand persona. So I invite you to um, scan the QR code, and then you can also visit mentee.com and just enter in the code that is there. Um, I'll leave this up for a second and I will put the link in chat as well. Um, if you just give me one second. I will, everybody um, scan the code. Um, I will stop presenting for a second, but I will reshare it. Um, I just need to grab the link. I am very curious to see what others say. <laughs> it's a little bit of a thinker, even though it's fun. Yeah. But it does help to, you know, kind of uh, just look at things in a little different, in a little different way, a little different angle. Yeah, and I think it's a practice um, too that you don't have to have all the right answers at first. So this is this is a first um, take, but I think. Um, getting getting staff involved, and if this is something you're interested in moving forward with, um, 
engaging with a consultant um, to help you through some of that. And then one thing we also did is we we paired our our brand work with our strategic plan. Um, so it became a really big part of that and that we could utilize some of those um, constituent interviews and things like that with what we were doing. Um, and so it was kind of an, it was all embedded in it. So it made it a really, really great time to think about all those things as we were moving through the process, engaging our, our stakeholders anyway. Um, so that's just a one uh, pointer about if you're thinking, if you have a strategic plan coming up or, you know, how this could fit in some of the work you're already, already doing, um, could be really helpful. Um, we'll take um, maybe three to four more minutes to to kind of think about that. Um, and, and Kyle, you're right. I, it is just a shift in mindset. I think for me, um, sometimes as a, as a nonprofit, we we dig into the day to day. We have all of these tasks um, and things we need to do, um, but but sometimes we don't step back and look at the bigger picture and say. Um, or we don't have time to. Um, and so that's developing that practice as well. Um, I'll share a couple of tools um, that kind of guide this work, but also um, can be utilized in other, other functions of your business as well. Um, all right, I'm going to, so the link is in the chat. I'm gonna stop presenting so I can pull up the mentee. Um, I will also share um, that if you haven't worked with Menti before, it's a really good engagement tool um, that you can utilize um, in meetings, um, just as a communication side tip. Um, we, you can use it for um, team building, um, various things like that. Um, so I, I can share that too and the resources when we, when we share. Um, all right, are you guys ready to see kind of some of the other results that people have, have shared? Um, give me one second. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share here. Um, all right. So, um, like to start with kind of an orienting question. So if your organization were a person, um, describe yourself in three words. Um, I, I haven't even gotten to read some of these, but, but I, I, I love it. And if anybody wants to chime in and maybe share theirs, um, we have time for that. Or, or if anybody has a question or anything about um, some of these, I'll scroll down as well so we can see more. Um, yeah, if there is anybody that wants to talk about what they put in there, um, feel free to raise your hand. That's that little hand down in the uh, on, on the base of your browser. So feel free to do that, and we can call on you. I like frustrated, eager student. Um, that that brings to mind, so, you know, a certain. Um, um, visual, which is an outcome of, of some of these. They're, they're really to give us an idea of orienting um, towards um, a really a, a, a person. So um, it's an, an old soul that seeks to preserve her ways of old, but is open to gently moving into the future gracefully with awareness of how the world is changing. She loves people, dogs, art, nature, and water, and she is excited to see how she grows. I love that. I mean, I think that gives you um, a really good sense of, of where you're going um, with this. Curious, uh, you don't have to say who you are, but have you done some of this work previously? Um, Um, that was that was me. I honestly didn't see the three words part <laughs> on my page. It said two hundred fifty words or less. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was just describing how I see the town and you know how it is. You know, we were uh, chartered in sixteen eighty, so preserving the old ways but moving forward. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I I love that. Like that you took it there. And I think that just that descriptions, um, and are you on the Eastern shore? Yes. Yeah. Ah, uh, so funny enough, um, I'll share to you. 
I, I spent a lot of time on the Eastern Shore. So I have lots of ties to, to Main Street um, <laughs> places. Um, so this is great. Um, I love um, how, how these can invoke kind of um, leading you into, okay, I mentioned um, kind of gender roles and how we grapple with that at our organization. Um, that wasn't where we went to first. We kind of started to describe ourselves and think about what that would would be. Um, and so I, I I like that we're getting kind of into that that here where female upper middle income, well educated, um, and then just to see the diversity here and the diversity in the different communities in Virginia. Um, you know, I think that's really helpful. Um, particularly when you're we're thinking about um, working together and how that might manifest. Um, all right, let's see. This one's <laughs> um, kind of fun, um, kind of um, gets your, your mind out of a space um, of, of even descriptor words, like this is actionable. So if they were gonna choose something to eat for lunch, what would be their go-to? Um, and what does that say about about you? So obviously we have some traditional um, kind of food. Um, we also have local focus. So really thinking about the where somebody would would go. Um, barbecue, pizza, and ice cream. I love that that person wants a whole like buffet. <laughs> they like options, right? So I think just thinking about all these little nuances can be really helpful. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely Mexican. Um, who doesn't love tacos? I love that there's lots of variety. So and and thinking about what that could um, you know say about a person if um, you know we're just asking a simple question about favorite food, but um, you know if if your organization always is going and looking for different options and things like that, how that manifests in, in a person. So, buffet. Hey, Raven, uh, yeah. uh, John Harvey from Tappahannock has a question for you. Oh, sure. Hi, John. Hey, I'm sorry. I must have hit the wrong button. I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. Um, anybody want to share their, their motivation behind maybe some of your answers? So, thinking about it's not just arbitrarily saying tapas is my favorite but is there a reason that kind of connects that to your organization all right we have two um yeah. go uh janet uh Onan onancock farmers market right oh gotta unmute <clears throat> unmute janet i'm gonna on, oh, I hi yeah i'm, I'm watching go. under somehow under my market mantle but i'm also main street hi um so our our new brand has a tagline of a little slice of nowhere else and also we have so much variety and so many different kinds of assets and so many different kinds of places to eat that i just thought little little bits of everything would sum up uh and something for everyone would sum up in ancock so that's why tapas thanks janet and then um, let's see, Warrington. Can you unmute? Okay, I'm on. Go. Sorry, I'm on the phone call, and I'm also <laughs> on the webinar because I've been traveling. So this is a little. Uh, I tried to talk on the phone, so I apologize for stuff. But um, I said ice cream just because our community has, Warrington has been focusing so much on community and family friendly, um, especially during COVID, that I, that just kind of speaks to that feeling. Um, we, we have uh, first Fridays coming up on Friday night and I don't know why it just me makes me think ice cream and family friendly and everybody getting together and just having a good time and um, just community all together. So um, that was the first thing that popped into my mind. It's not necessarily 
as creative as some of the others. And it's very, um, it's very Americana, which isn't, I mean, cause I thought cheeseburger too. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going down this path, which isn't necessarily what it is, but um, yeah, it just kind of speaks to that feeling. Excellent. Thank you. And Raven, I just want to draw your attention to the time. It's 1150. So we've got yep. maybe, it's going quickly, isn't it? Maybe 15 yeah, more it minutes. Is. <laughs> we got 15 more minutes. Yeah. So I think we had one hand raised and then I'll go on to the last question. Maybe we can process that. And then I'll, I'll follow up and end with a couple of um, tips on moving forward and, and where to go from here if you're interested in developing more of this work. So Kyle, I think you're muted. I am. Look at me. Uh, <laughs> David, feel free David. to unmute and ask your question. David Green. Actually, mine wasn't so much a question. I was going to comment also on the uh, food. Um, I, I, I'm the one that put barbecue, pizza, and ice cream. And the barbecue is last year we had a successful barbecue event. And this year we're having another one on October 1st. And uh, so it's like I feel like uh, everything is barbecue right now. And, and it's cool because it's uh, attracting people from – all over Tennessee, North Carolina, and so forth. So, um, and then the ice cream, I, I relate to the other uh, lady that was just talking, I just see executive director. Um, but uh, the ice cream is, um, well, I was at an event yesterday for National Night Out and it was God awful hot. Um, and ice cream is just forefront on my mind. And it is, it's something that community, the kids love it. The, and um, anyway, it just creates that excitement. Thank you, David. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I, and I think too, um, just reflecting on what David said is, is food is just such a part of bringing people together. That's that's another um, reason that why, why this is an interesting question to look into. Um, and then finally, um, I'm not a car person, but um, you know, some people that are might have different answers or, um, so this, um, question um, is really interesting in terms of looking at um, kind of, are you more practical? Are you more flashy? Like wh what, how does that manifest in, 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 in a car um, that your organization might drive as a person if, if we're looking at it as a person? Um, so I think, I think it's interesting. We have a lot of um, 10 year old SUV. Um, so um, focusing on some of that um, kind of Kind of classic if it works it works we, we don't need anything new it's we've had it for 10 years so just kind of looking at some of these um in terms of what they might say about an organization so for instance um we we drove something sensible like a nissan rogue so we could fit some people in there um but it, it's a little bit more on the um uh, on the um the practical side um so I'll go ahead and um, pause there if anybody has any anything to add here, or I can stop presenting and just get some feedback on, um, are there any reflections um, from just going through this? I know that we don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to give everybody a chance to kind of get in the mindset of thinking um, about how this might manifest um, for your brand and how you might use it um, moving forward. So are there any kind of initial reflections um, or does it resonate with anybody or is it kind of weird, um, you know? So feel free to put it in chat or raise your hand. Um, Glenn. I think you need to unmute if you're muted. There we go. I was <clears throat> looking for the right button. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm particularly struck with is is how you uh, identify the various uh, segments. Uh, I've used a tool called mind mapping a lot for doing that kind of thing. That way you're not forcing something into a bucket to start with. You can mm -hmm. join them together and then name your bucket. Yeah, and, and we actually, as part of the Mission Elevation program, we have one of our coaches that uses mind mapping um, a lot in, in, in the sense of getting from one place to another. So I think that's a great um, tool. And if you have a resource, um, maybe the 
the group would would want to see that as well. So um, I think that's great. Thank you. All right. Um, so I know that hour goes by or an hour and 15 minutes goes by pretty fast, but um, and you could spend we spent months um, on our brand and developing some of this stuff. Um, so an hour, an hour and 15 doesn't seem like a lot of time. Um, but really, I think part of the success is this is just thinking about sparking the opportunity for for you to think about these things in a different way moving forward. Um, so I don't know before the call today if anybody would have said, oh, well, if our organization is going to lunch, where would we go? <laughs> um, but um, for us, we kind of think about that now in the office when we are hosting an event or when we are like I said, writing a newsletter, how would our persona write that newsletter? How would Vicki um, sit down and pin pin a an email to a donor? Um, so it's helpful in creating that consistency and then also thinking about taking um, kind of a, a framework and putting it into um, what you're doing. So let me share. Um, all right. So bringing us around to kind of um, the end, and I know Kyle has um, a couple of things to go over at the end, so I won't um, take too much more time, but, um, you know, just some tips is at first kind of keep it simple, get your, get your footing, um, get used to the process and, and, and kind of develop a process that works for you. Kind of like Glenn shared that, that he's used other resources like mind mapping, um, to, to do this work. So there's a lot out there. Um, and then know that similar to a strategic plan, that this is a living document, um, expect these to change from time to time and expect to, um, reference them, um, in fact, you should reference them as, as best practice when um, you're doing them. Don't just let them sit on a shelf um, and then get your staff involved. I think um, for those organizations that are more than a staff of one, I saw that there were a couple, um, but not only staff, but um, it could be an opportunity to um, get your stakeholders or, or board also involved in, in, in helping out with this process. Um, and then how will you know you are successful when you do this? One thing I didn't, we don't have a lot of time to go over metrics. We could probably talk a lot about how we, we measure kind of impact in communications, but just to think about some of those metrics that if you're starting this work um, to get um, where you're going from and where you're going to. Um, measurement and staff engagement and then community engagement um, obviously can be uh, measured in various ways. So just wanted to highlight that is to think about how, how you'll know you're successful and what metrics you kind of have to start with. Um, and then I just wanted to um, just share some of everyday tools and disciplines that come out in this work. So really the intentional um, strategic thought prior to implementing a plan, we call it in the mission elevation, design and do. Um, so going slow in that planning phase to go fast later, um, allowing yourself balcony time. This is what we call it. We call that that in the mission elevation program. There's other words for it, but allowing yourself to get out of that day to day, set a time that um, that time to so you can see um, if people are dancing below you, what what commonalities are happening. And then the from to framework, um, that's something that you're not always going to see built into audience personas, but something that I like to use in mine so I can get a really great perspective on where I'm starting and where I'm going to um, in that sense. And then um, our next Mission Elevation program doesn't start till 2023, um, but we are inviting people to start having conversations with us um, should they be interested in, in, in hearing more. Um, so just in a nutshell, it's a 12-month program where um, yourself and a partner from your organization work together over those 12 months um, with a cohort um, of other nonprofits and a coach to tackle a challenge that your organization is facing, um, whether that be um, 
creating new programs to impact the community, raising more funds to make sure that you're sustainable in mission impact. Um, and so we have a lot of time to start talking about that. Um, and we usually like to talk one-on-one -on -one with people to hear more about where your organization is and how the program might help. So I invite people to reach out to me um, should they wanna talk about how that might look for them and learn a little bit more. Um, and then um, just some resources on where some of this information um, comes from, some templates for you to work from um, that I found particularly helpful in my work. Um, and then su suggested consultants who I will just highlight the Spark Mill and then Campfire and Company were really instrumental in helping us develop some of our work at VCDC around this. Um, this um, audience and brand persona work. And then, thank you. Raven, um, I, have a, I have a quick question for you. So yeah. after a persona is developed, so if say a, a board or the organization committee develops this persona from a, you know, a, a, good, a great process, a lot of thought that goes into it. So then after that's created, where should it live so that there's a continued use, especially considering that there's a rotation of leadership within our Main Street organizations <clears throat> and sometimes executive directors as well. And so we wanna make sure that that has a life and is used. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think my initial thought too is, is keeping it simple enough where a new person can come in and pick it up, not having it be a multi-tab document where somebody has to go through and read a whole narrative. So um, in terms of just functionality, keeping it as simple as possible, but as meaningful as possible and focusing on um, kind of the motivation and what value proposition you can bring um, to that audience. Um, and in terms of a kind of staff turnover and how to have it keep it a living document, um, ideally it's embedded in almost any onboarding you do. I know that's part of when we went through our rebrand, um, some of that was highlighted in our our onboarding. So if there is shift in, in staff, um, that we make sure that we highlight that from the beginning. And we've embedded some um, of our brand work um, just from the beginning when anybody starts. So I know particularly around a staff of one, if you have one in and one out, hopefully it's seeing the value in that work and how it is creating the community. And essentially that is your mission and what you do. So it becomes central. Um, so I don't know if I, I, I said exactly yeah. where, you know, on your server, but <laughs> right. yeah. have those or, anymore. Or like, or like Basecamp or a Google Doc yeah. or, or whatever, in, 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 or the, geez, a, a board member um, manual, you know, whatever they're getting during yeah. that onboarding piece. Um, Raven, you, you brought up VCDC's uh, persona. Vicky, I believe it is. Can you give yeah. us an example how Vicki presents herself in the communications that you all have done? You know, website design, messaging, uh, even branding, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I wish I, I would have kind of shared a, a before and after. Um, so just thinking about... Um, I'll share the the easiest is our logo before our logo and, and this is design I'm a designer so um had very very strong points very very angular um we moved into our new brand it showed up in in different colors and there's um a roundness to it and there's layers um so they they invoke a very different feeling than the strong angular um, previous. And then in terms of how we utilize our persona, um, we actually developed a, um, a, a matrix of here is how we show up. And here are some of the, it's almost an elevator speech, um, of how we talk about ourselves. And so here are some words we do use. Here are some words we don't use. Um, and so really even thinking about it, 
that way um, in, in terms of saying, we're not a tax credit syndicator. We are a nonprofit that helps community development um, and build affordable housing. And we support the nonprofit community in doing that. Um, means much different things when we started talking about how we, how we support and what we do. Um, looking at even those words um, and looking at it through and through a lens of if we were Vicky showing up somewhere, how would we describe what we do? And it wouldn't be simply tax credit syndication through the low income housing tax credit. Yeah. And then that language um, gets used on your social media posts, maybe in any of your branded documents, uh, the copy on your, your website. Um, yep. any, what, what else would that be? Um, yeah. everything almost when we're thinking yeah. about even, <clears throat> um, conferences and how we show up and, and even sometimes, um, branded material that we hand out, um, mm -hmm. what choices are we making? Um, you know, one of my favorite reflections, if you're an eco-friendly, um, company, but you show up with all this plastic stuff, it, it d does that, you know, is that jiving right so yeah. as vcdc if we um you know how we show up and what we're giving away or what we we have on our table isn't representative of it exactly who we are yeah. um and, and and that personification gives us a framework to say oh well if i was vicky <laughs> what would what would i do and how would i host an event um what would what would be important um, for us to have there to be um, supportive of of everybody that's there. Yeah. So um, I I think um, that's that's an important reflection is just thinking about in in almost any case, um, even yeah. office design um, and and how you engage with staff or board even yeah. um, internally, um, you can use it. Yeah. Um, so Raven, has Jenny. there been any, oh, I just a quick question related yeah. to that. Have you all documented or observed any outcomes from the switch of the branding or the messaging? And what would those be? Yeah. Um, and so going back to your original question too, I, I didn't mention our website. So when we did our rebrand, we revisited our website. And one of the things we did with our website was rebuild it to be focused on audience. So before we were just trying to tell everybody every single thing we did. Um, and so now if you go to our website, there is a clear path for investors, developers, and community support. So we can see those. And I will say we have tracked um, some of those metrics to our website and, and can see people engaging with the different um, portions more um, fully. Um, okay. And so I will also say we've re we've received a lot more um cold calls or a lot more interest from just our our website given we've developed those funnels through um basing our content on audiences that's good um right yeah um jenny said something i i think is great in sort of closing out our conversation here I enjoy the system of personalizing a place into the form of an actual person. From a psychological perspective, it increases empathy and the desire to protect and bring out the best qualities of the place. So that that is absolutely yeah. true. And so Jenny leading off of that says, do you update this every few years depending on how the persona organization grows? Yeah, absolutely. And and we're still in in kind of the first couple of years of our brand. Um, so we're still working to develop um, those, but best practice would be to look at, um, you know, this even yearly as part of um, just sit down and give yourself that balcony time on it to say, have we had a shift? And then also just thinking about in terms of um, best practices for kind of a strategic plan and how how it relates to that and your organizational's long term goals. Um, mm -hmm. There will there will be need to be some alignment, um, and and that's always a good place to look um, for that. So absolutely, I think um, having it a living document um, as your initiative change. Maybe you have a new program or a new event coming up. And so maybe that creates a spark of, oh, well, we should look at 
um, how this impacts some of our, our, our personification work and, um, and, and what goals you might have around that. So. Yeah. Thank you. And there's a question about where does this persona intersect with your own? Ah, yes. Uh oh, because it sounds um, like somebody's saying you're a lot like Vicki Raven. Um, it's actually <laughs> funny. I'm a lot less like Vicki than I seem. I am not a mother. I <laughs> um I actually am a little bit more on the hipster side than I think that they <laughs> um, uh, but um I will say, um Part of the importance to, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Not just a personal. Um, in fact, we have one person in our office that is is pretty much spot on. Um, but I will say part of this process is getting as many voices in the room that have um, that um, knowledge of your organization. So it wasn't just me sitting down with a third party saying, here's who we think we are. Um, we took our constituent interviews from our strategic plan that also embedded the questions, um, which made it easier too. So that's that's the research and validation part of our personal brand, um, which I already invited you to, to, to kind of start that work. Um, but then going forward, if you have a strategic plan coming up or if you do yearly interviews or meet with a donor, um, asking some of those questions and really a lot of what came out of that persona was from our partners yeah. saying you guys support us you guys are supportive um you're not a banking institution that wears a button-up collar um and so things like that really came out of um seeing that shift of um how, how other people even see us too um, yeah. and inviting staff to do that as well. Um, so we had internal working groups and an external working group that ultimately led us to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so where we're going here is that there's going to be more consistency. If you choose a very relatable persona that is um, reflected in your communications and your in your website design and your letters to donors and your volunteer program, then it's going to be more effective in motivating uh, those people to donate or to volunteer to participate in any way. They start to see themselves in it. Um, it's a bit more palatable. So there is a psychological side to all of this, but this also presents a, a very fun, tangible way to figure out something like this versus going in blindly to your communications. Um, yeah. Uh, and and then with a buckshot approach of just hoping to land on somebody. So thank you Absolutely. so, yeah, Raven, thank you so much for being here today. I can't believe it's 12, 13 I, I know. So I know um, it was gonna be a challenge to get through through things, but I right? do appreciate everybody um, and and being willing to put a different hat on and think a little, little differently maybe today. Um, yeah. I'll go ahead. Yeah. In a very tangible way. Thank you so much. And Raven, I appreciate your time here today, all your wor words of wisdom, both from your personal time in in uh, volunteering for a nonprofit organization, but also from your, your professional realm. This is uh, really great information. And there is lots more to talk about, isn't there? So we'll have to continue this uh, through, well, we have our director huddles with all the executive directors of a des our designated um, communities. We have uh, the president forums uh, with uh, the presidents of those same organizations. We have our Explore and Main Street uh, community uh, interchanges. So these are great places to, if you weren't able to really answer your questions today, but make sure that you tune into those and participate. When you're making connections with uh, your peers uh, across the Commonwealth, that's a great way to really advance um, uh, your, your effectiveness in the work that you're doing. So Raven, thank you again so much for being here today. Uh, I also want to point everybody, uh, let them know that there will be some slides. These slides will be given to you, including uh, Ravens, along with um, all the hyperlinks that are going to be available in that PDF. So at the very end of it will be these closing slides, our Community Vitality Office, which manages Virginia Main Street. This is the team uh, that makes all of that happen. 
And then we also have our, uh, our, our uh, expanded family of the Economic Development and Community uh, vitality division within the Department of Housing and Community Development. So we're looking at with Community Business Lodge and Go Virginia uh, as our, our team partners, Industrial Revitalization Fund and such. If you're interested in, in talking more about any of these, please uh, you know, reach out to us. The, the, um, this, this presentation will have all the hyperlinks you need to make it just that much easier. So with that, it's 12.15. And I want to thank everybody for being here. You guys go out there and do some really great work. Um, we're in an interesting place coming out of the pandemic. We get a little, little ebb and flow, but at the same time, we're opened up to really put anything on the table um, to be more effective in the work that we're doing. So keep it up. Thank you so much, Raven. I don't know if you have anything in closing you want to say. No, just thank you to everybody for spending a whirlwind hour and 15 minutes talking about something we could have spent a lot lot more time on. So I appreciate everybody kind of um, thinking outside the box a little bit. And I encourage everybody to kind of um, push forward and, and, and think about how you might utilize something like this um, in your organization. Perfect. Well, thank you, Raven. I'll see you out there in about. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye, everyone.